Um, but I, I do have a passion. I have a few passions. Uh, uh, one of them is postcodes. Any postcode fans in the house? <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, and I've been doing that for quite some time. Um, the postcode nerds in here will be very familiar with postcode updates from the Royal Mail. Uh, I've been subscribing since at least 1995. Um, I mean, April, I mean, only recently, about time they sorted out SM24 uh, and check, cor corrected that spelling in the locality because um, the, the Welsh were getting really angry. This is the kind of gold dust that you get when you're into postcodes. Um, and really disappointed that they didn't celebrate the fact that we were about 50 years into the sort of general popularity of the, uh, of the postcode. And by way of a sort of warming you up, I'll perhaps tell you a little bit more about the, um, the, the genesis of the postcode. You're up for that, aren't you? Don't care. Um, <laughs> it was all began with a guy called Roland Hill. Um, he was a bit of a busybody, um, a man after my own heart, some might say. Uh, and he was just interested in the way the post office ran. Um, and between... Um, about, about 1837, he wrote a really stunning paper on his own, well, he was encouraged by an MP, but it was called Post Office Reform, Its Importance and Practicability. Now, he did that in his spare time. He was not asked to do this by the post office. <laughs> That's the kind of nerd I like. Um, and it was wide ranging, but it's actually, uh, it did have a lot of impact. Um, he, it was talking about, you know, post flow and how you get stuff done. And most famously, he introduced the penny black. <laughs> um, his face didn't actually appear on stamps until some uh, many years later, uh, when uh, in, I think, 1985, uh, he was celebrated, but, but very much the man who invented the modern postal service. <coughs> and um, one thing he proposed when he eventually got the gig of becoming postmaster general was to, in 1857, he proposed subdividing London, which received the majority of the post, into 10 districts, 10. So eight points of the compass, uh, north, northeast, east, southeast, southern, southwest, and west and north, and then west central, east central, bang in the middle. So those have been going since 1857, those districts. Um, th that was a sort of broad concept and then that was it mapped out in a little more detail. Now, um, they were kind of already doing that, the post office sort of internally, but this was about making it hit the public conscious and people using it in their addresses. So um, a leaflet was sent out um, to most addresses, certainly centrally, saying that you should now start quoting your postcode, uh, such as it is, on uh, a or your zone, your district, um, on any address. So if you're in Albany Street, New Road, Regent's Park was your address before. Now it was Albany Street, NW. And that was, that was enough to find Albany Street. Um, now this did catch on. And it started to really define London as a shape. And in fact, what then happened is maps got printed with an overlay on with um, these postcode zones on. And it started to give London a sort of, a sort of shape. There's West Central, there's East Central. Um, we've got Mogg's uh, map of London and cab fares. Uh, it's a bit hard to see here perhaps, but there are the eight zones and the two in the middle. Um, and then these older maps would be reprinted or uh, overprinted with some colored lines to show where you are. And it start, people started to sort of feel like they were part of not just London, but I'm in, I'm in West Central. Um, numbers weren't around yet at this point. It was just it was just those zones, um, and it really caught on in, in a ways that went, went well beyond what the post office wanted. And the post office only really wanted them for sorting mail. It was for their convenience, not for anybody else's. Now, um, Hill retired in 1864, and he left behind some enemies. Hard to think why. It's not like he was an annoying twat who just decided to stick his nose in to get the job or anything. But um, uh, that was the notice he sent out to get people to fill in their postcodes. Um, this man came along, Anthony Trollope. Um, Anthony, a name you may have heard of. Anthony Trollope is, in fact, um, the, uh, an author, but he was also the postmaster general, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and he really didn't like uh, Hill. Uh, in fact, he sort of relished unpicking Roland Hill's work um, and took quite a deal of satisfaction in that and making a point of it. So only two years after uh, Roland Hill retired in 1866, he started to dismantle that system. And essentially, he said, we only need eight uh, zones. He didn't just take away the two central ones. No, that would be the sensible thing to do. What he did is he, he decided that the north 
and northeast and east were a bit vague, particularly the northeast. And despite the fact that it was a, a sort of rural and didn't, at least 10 years ago, didn't have much traffic, was starting to make a profit, he, in 1866, he closed um, the office, uh, the sorting office that was in that district, and also the one in the south um, district, and merge these zones. So uh, the bulk of um, the bulk of the what was the NE zone uh, got redispersed amongst east and north, and what was in uh, the south zone uh, became part of uh, southwest and southeast. Sorry, <coughs> northeast uh, became uh, part of the uh, eastern zone. So that was a sort of a, a quite an irritating change for people who'd already got used to sort of saying that they were in northeast London or south London. Uh, and that's why you do not see, uh, as you've, you've probably worked out, any postcodes uh, or S postcodes that relate to London. S now stands for Sheffield and NE stands for Newcastle. They're not part of the London uh, postcodes, but the other eight still are. So... They become very much part of signs. This is from uh, Alistair Hall's excellent book on London street name plates. Yes, it's just a book about street name plates. Um, that's the kind of nerd we like. Uh, very much a part of it now, very much a part of it then. This is when the numbers came along. That's pre-numbers. There's just SW there. There's just a W there. There's just an SW there. Uh, very much part of defining London. So... Um, <laughs> What to do about the signs that had already gone up? Because as, as I said, they, they caught on quite quickly. Well, um, the Metropolitan Board of Works, which was responsible for putting them up in the first place, decided, um, although it was responsible for putting them up, wasn't responsible for taking them down. So left that to the local councils. Um, good, uh, good London sort of council collaboration and thinking there. It's almost as if they hadn't learned anything. Um, so so whatever, whatever went on there, it didn't seem like the borough of Hackney got the message because <laughs> to this day, there are still signs that say NE uh, in, in, uh, in North East London uh, and uh, no particular rush to take them down. Um, we wanted to know a little bit more about where they were and why they might be there because there's not much recorded about that. So um, a chap called uh, Sam Roberts, who's uh, more famous for, as, as ghost signs and has a new book out on that subject. Ghost signs are those faded signs you see around, well, anywhere, but certainly uh, certainly London. Uh, and he followed that. And he, he, he ran this NE Signs project uh, where we, uh, in one April in 2018, we sent people around the borough looking for these signs and taking pictures of them, pointing at them. You know, like councillors point at potholes and say, uh, <laughs> local hey, we were pointing up at signs. Uh, and then we marked them on a street, uh, on, a, on a Google map. Um, we did a little audit of them and where we'd find them. We also sent people out into some of the areas where they shouldn't be uh, to make sure, and there were none there. Um, <laughs> and, and you'll see, you get these sort of nice confluences. It's not very clear here, but that's Martello Street, E8, formerly Tower Street, NE. So that's where they have not only not removed the previous sign, they very much kept it and explained that the street name has changed. Um, Median Road, E5, Dunlace Road, E7. And what, any, anybody know what's particularly interesting about that period of Hackney ro Road sign that is unique to Hackney? Fans of Jay Foreman may know this. No, very good. <laughs> Were you as angry as I was about update 47, the postcode? No, okay, just me. Okay, just me, just me. Um, and so we, 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 we found them all, we think. Uh, there's two that we didn't find, uh, or we, we, we looked at and, and uh, said uh, not any, but N. Um, let, let's just explain what the uh, purple line here is, what the any zone should have been. Um, the green line here is the pre-1957 uh, London Borough of Hackney. There's also the London Borough, well, the Metro Metropolitan Borough of Hackney, Metropolitan Borough of Stoke Newington, and Metropolitan Borough of Shoreditch down here now form part of Hackney. But interestingly, we can find no signs beyond that line that are NE, even though there should be some, certainly down here, none up there, but there should be some in Shoreditch, but there aren't. So Shoreditch did remove them. It's just Hackney that didn't. How many are there? Well, we found 56 on the night. Uh, and a further 10 since then. Uh, and tragically, two have uh, at least disappeared since that sign. In fact, in the background there, you can see on Ickborough Road, 
the, the sorry sign of a frame of a uh, former former sign of, uh, that said Icbra Road NE. So if somebody's nicked that, if that was you, on one hand, well played, <laughs> and I'm jealous. On the, it's a bit like using Amazon, you know, you've got guilt about it, but ultimately, if they've got it, you're going to buy it. Um, I'll buy it off you uh, and redonate it to the, to the borough. We, we've got a project to try and save them now so they aren't removed, at least by the council, but we'll see. And if you want to know more about these, uh, these are the main players who helped with this project. Uh, Sam Roberts, Ghost Signs, as I mentioned before. We, uh, a friend of uh, Nerd Night, uh, Amir Dotan, who is uh, famous not least for his cold hole covers uh, talk that many of you uh, may have seen. Um, for those that haven't seen that, that is way more interesting than you think it sounds. Uh, <laughs> And Lee Jackson, who's known as Victoria London, and a couple of sources there. That's me. I'm real Nick Perry, uh, not to be confused with the fake one. Uh, 